Rose alongside me, Paul Rosen. Now, after yesterday's defeats for either of these sides, it's about trying to get back to winning ways. The harder task, you would have to say, belongs to Norway, Canada, the reigning world champions, looking to win the world championship for a fifth time. Not an easy prospect for the Norwegian team. They were unlucky against Korea, a couple of barnstorming goals from Bakke, but Korea running out 3-2 victors. As for Canada, they pushed and pushed, but eventually after pulling the goalie as well, they went down 3-1 at the very last moment. Norway, Canada, Paul, how's that going to go? Well, Norway played quite well yesterday, losing 3-2, like you said, to Korea, and I think this is obviously a, a step up Way back when, Norway was a strong, strong power. They're not as good as they were. They've started to get better by bringing more youth in and getting their grassroots program in, Alan. They are getting better. This is going to be a tough match. I'm not sure whether they have enough to handle it. Canada is going to be very upset about yesterday. Not that they lost, because it's a preliminary game, but the way they lost. Dominic LaRocque was an absolute rock. He stood on his head for most of the game. Unfortunately, they were very sloppy in the neutral zone. Gave up many, many, many chances that they should not. Declan Farmer was by far the best player in the game, and they lost 3-1. to one. They will come out much better today, I guarantee it. There'll be no settling for defeat for the Canadians. A proud hockey nation. So, too, are the Norwegians previous winners in the past as well. They've both got calibre, but in recent years, the game has swung to Canada and America. Satoru Yamaguchi, who was the referee for the first game on day one, returns. He's flanked by his linesman, Brendan Lewis of the United States, and Jan Renek of the Czech Republic. A couple of Czech officials taking part in this tournament, just over two minutes before we get underway. This is a quick look at the roster for Norway. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, Aldon Blackett, the 30-year-old from Oslo, fired in a couple of goals against Korea. One was an absolute delight to watch. The other kind of bobbled under the goalie's stick, but that's the danger. Canada have got to watch out for. Espen Hedge there, the uh, the bearded gentleman in your screen. They've got to watch out for those shots from distance, haven't they? From him and from Rolf Weiner Pedersen, who no matter what, Pedersen always comes up big against Canada. He's had some great games against Canada over the years. And in turn, the uh, the Canadians, they're, uh, they're just loaded with talent up front. And I'm going to say watch number 18, Billy Bridges. He's going to have a breakout game today. His shot is an absolute cannon, one of the hardest in the world. And the Norwegian goalie better be prepared because it could be a long day. All of the action being brought to you live. If you're watching on the Facebook page, then we want to hear from you as well. Where are you watching from? What on earth sort of time is it where you come from? Wherever you're watching, a big thank you to every one of you for tuning in we are delighted to have you with us we're a matter of seconds from getting away uh, Udo says greetings to Rosen always love the fights against you and Westlake so there you go Udo Segriff oh yes I I remember him I remember him very well you fighting don't believe it I would just say maybe uh, trying hard for your country. Casual roughing. Yeah, <laughs> getting to know each other roughly. <laughs> Thank you very much to Udo for getting in touch. Let us know where you're watching from, everybody. For now, we're watching from high up in the Ostrava Arena. And we're delighted to be with you for the first game of Group A on day number two. Early, early indication from Canada. Right off the hop. Westlake over to Liam Hickey. Liam Hickey from defense transitions up for a good shot on goal. Unfortunately, he missed the net. Well, McGregor 
also trying to get heavily involved in these early stages, and that's a fine save. Gronley getting down low to his right-hand side. That's a fine one. That was a nice little pass by Lewin to uh, Westlake. Westlake right-hand, left-hand. Good stop by the Norwegian goalie. Big collision from Vranz and Lavin. Bridges now, as uh, Paul was saying, desperate to open his account. Goal from Westlake, the only one they got against the US. They won't mind if they get four or five in a final, but you've got to get there first. Lovely little drop back, trying to keep Bridges involved. Moves out to Gemmel. He'll keep it inside the blue line on the right wing side for Canada. From deep again, and Cronley has already been called into action two or three times here, Paul. We've got 13.35 still on the clock, and already the hands of Johan Cronley will be a little bit sore. Yeah, he's going to be tested. Billy Bridges, first of all, this is the shot by Westlake. Nice blocker stop, and then Gemmel slips it off to Bridges. Bridges is dangerous from anywhere, and a nice stop with the chest. Again, just inside the blue line. Clever play whilst lying on his front there from Cozzolino. Big squash from Nordstoga. That's poor. Bridges was just waiting for that, then he couldn't quite control, but it's fallen advantageously for Cozzolino. Gemmel trying to offer a little bit of help and keep it inside the blue line. He does. He takes a hit from Grossfeld. And now Armstrong. 22-year-old from Ottawa. Couldn't sort his sticks out enough to get moving, but it's given away again. Rodney Crane into the action. Nice. Oh, oh just slips through Cozzolino. Good effort, though. Turning from Cozzolino. Spins on a sixpence, but can't get it away, and it's a chance for a break here. Great bit of blocking. Backer. Well, he went from distance again. He perhaps should have come a little further inside that blue line. Yeah, you're not going to score from that far out on Corbin Watson. He's a true professional. You're not going to beat him from outside the blue line. It's going to be tough to beat him from inside the blue line. And here comes Liam Hickey. Hickey has a support on the left in Smith, who gets past the first, can pull the trigger! And Lahu. I think gets the final touch. He does. Lahu deflects it. A nice play. A little sloppy in the front. And then uh, Smith, Corbin Smith, here's Hickey taking the puck up. Gets it over the blue line. Gets caught. Smith from his belly. Fires it on the ice. Lahu deflects it. They work on this in practice all the time. Here it is, Smith gets his balance, fires it low, sees Lahu. Lahu gets a stick on it, and it's 1 0 for Canada. Good start for Canada. They've been putting the shots on target so far in this first three minutes. We just about had those three minutes, 12 03 on the game clock here in the first period. And they get their first from Lahu. Riley oh. trying to make space. That's a big hit from Hamre, hammering his opponent. That's a shoulder to shoulder. He'll definitely know what's going on. Lahu with another chance here, you know. Good save from Gronley again in close range. Smith and Lahu are playing quite well together on this line. Yeah, Corbin Smith couldn't quite find the finish from the rebound from Gronley. Smith, it is here on this near side. Hickey. Norwegian player with had a stick in his hand was Hamri. From distance, maybe. No, Henry just palms it off. Oh. Looking for the top of the onion bag and missing. A little tie up on the boards, Alan. Yeah, Lahu just moving away in case it 
works itself free. It doesn't just yet. Takes a bit of a hit for his troubles, but he and Smith, as you mentioned, Paul are working quite neatly indeed. And Lahu is waiting for some support. Lahu has a Norwegian all over him. This is where the, the ref's going to blow it. He's not going to blow it. Gets dangerous in there. Rolf Weiner Pedersen comes in, as he's done many times over the year. Captain McGregor talks to him. Well, it's 0-1. Uh, Canada are leading. Players back out onto the ice. The uh, Canadians will be delighted with this start, Paul. Absolutely. They have moved the puck very well. Only one shot on their goal with uh, Corbin Watson making an easy glove save from the neutral zone. Get the win from the face off here. And uh, chasing across is Adam Bakke, who had that shot on Watson's goal a few minutes ago. Moves it out to McGregor. 25-year-old from Ontario. Spinning around, the captain. Westlake, the former captain. Plenty of leaders out there for Canada. Gemmel. Sandwiched between the boards and Martin Vranz. And Norway could come away with it, but uh, Bakkenis didn't know where the puck was. Neat turn from Westleg. He got one yesterday. Grunny's on the floor here. The Canadians not making enough space to get that shot away. Good puck movement then. Uh, Westlake with a shot from the point. Slips out. Westlake scores! It's two in two days for the former captain. He took a little bit of time away and he's making up for it. It's a double already for him. And the one thing about Westlake, he will definitely take advantage of any opportunity he has. And here it is here with Tyler McGregor, the captain, moving the puck, moving the puck. He takes the shot. Lewin with a little bit of a tip over to Westlake. Westlake puts it in. And girlfriend Catherine is going to be happy again in Oakville, Ontario. Westlake up the double. Canada already two to nothing up. 9.38 still remaining in this first period. And we did say, after that defeat, you might not want to be Norway. Don't ever want to face a wounded animal. And Canada will be just that coming into this game. And that's a great analogy. Uh, they are going to play like they got caught in a bear trap. Bridges getting stuck in where needed. Armstrong around the back of the net. Hamry. Trying to hold him off, but that's clever from Armstrong. Turning away from trouble is Cosolino. He's got two alongside him. He'll just make space for himself here. Oh, oh. off the outside. A foul off the inside of the post and right across. That trickled across the uh, the crossbar, Allen. Well, Pedersen, nine-time Paralympics. He's going to have to use all of his experience here to try and get his team going again. Oh, nearly touched in by Armstrong. Just waiting at the long side pipe. It was just too quick. Hickey with a chance. Good glove save from Gronley. Spilled it. And Hamri gets it away. This is all Canada so far. They're, oh, they're, just, they're just fighting fires here. Yeah, it's they're... coming again. Hickey, lovely. It's beautiful from Canada here. Cosolino couldn't finish it. Some exceptional stick play in the early stages of this game, and this could be three. It is Bridges burns Norway. Building 
Bridges in Osrava. Billy, number 18, Bridges, puts his first of the tournament in. This was a really nice play by Dom Costolino. Bridges takes it, gets the rebound, goes from his right hand to his left hand. There he is again, right hand, left hand, puts it in, and his wife, Sammy Jo Small in Mississauga, Ontario, will be proud of her husband. Sammy Jo Small, one of the greatest goalkeepers in Canadian women's history. Played for a long time. I don't know, Alan, if you ever heard of Sammy Jo Small. She was a great goaltender. Well, no goaltender was getting near that one. Billy Bridges utilizing the sprawling body of Gronley and firing in for a 3-0 lead to the Canadians with eight still to go. And Norway could be on the end of what Japan suffered from the Czech Republic yesterday. And 8 nothing yesterday, Canada have come out like lightning. Smith right across. To be fair, the referee was more in danger from that one than the goal was. They're shooting from everywhere. Riley, big hit from Nordstogger. 36 year old battling away with Riley. Bridges trying to help him out. Back at, we'll just flick this around the boards and hope for the best. Kept in the blue line, a big hit on uh, Kostustian. And the Norwegian number six then just dumps it. And a whole line change coming. They've got to be quick. Transition from Canada, that's a big part of their game. But who doesn't get Crane going in the right direction? Again, this one's just pinged off the boards. Hickey fighting. Good blocking from Martin Hamley there, allowing Pedersen a little bit of time, and you can't let the puck come to you. They've stolen it. Fired in at Gronley and he holds on. The issue there, Martin Vines on this near side board was just waiting for the puck to reach his stick and it just got stolen. No, you can't do that against a team like Canada. You have to go to the puck. You can't wait for the puck to get to you. That was a really nice play over to uh, number eight, the captain of the team, Tyler McGregor. Nice shot and an equally nice stop by the Norwegian goalie. See there, Smith. And uh, Lena Schroeder getting their uh, the cages on the masks caught together. 6.33 left in this first. Hard luck by McGregor. He's had a couple of really good chances. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch with us, you can oh. do. As that one goes right across the crease. Just one of the, the faintest of touches. Might come to love it here. Great first touch, can't get a shot away. And that's dangerous. Oisith was behind his own goalie at one point there. Wow. Seen one potential OG here at these games. Nice from Vans, that one. Pushed away by Hamry. It's out of the door. This zone. is Unica, yeah, exactly. That's why the noise levels have raised. There are more Norwegians in here than there are Canadians, and they were just happy to see the Norwegians get across the blue line. They might not be happy now if they get caught short at the back. Westlake spins, getting held up. Right-hand side now with Hickey. That's a good, good bit of blocking from Lloyd Solberg. Hamre hammers in again. Been quite a physical game so far, Alan. Yeah, Norway, not afraid to mix it up. They've just lacked anything going forward. We talked about Japan in this context a little bit earlier on. And that's a, a misplaced puck from Cosolino. Five minutes to go in the first period. Cosolino eventually holds on long enough to get across the blue line, inviting Armstrong. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Nice pass. Cosolino might get a chance anyway into the uh, pads of Gronli and then right across from Armstrong. Well, it's men against boys at the moment. Yeah, they're toying with them right now. Everything that comes loose, they get. Crane with a chance. Oh, it's oh. wide. 
And he had Bridges wide open on the far post. Yeah, Bridges might remind him of that one later. He will for sure. Cozzolino, lovely. Pirouette, pass one. And the second, now trying to lay it up. Chance for Bridges, oh, he's tucking off his stick. <laughs> Cozzolino, can he get some air on it? Didn't need it in the end, underneath it goes. Number four, number three, should I say. Get ahead of myself. Tom Cozzolino, he put it in. A ton of play here. Cozzolino takes it from his left hand to his right hand. Makes the goaltender stretch full out. The goaltender may not be playing the whole game if the coach is nice to him and might give him some time off, some rest, because I think the Canadians are going to keep coming. Yeah, and here's another one. This is it. Great play. Cosolino just had the puck on and stick like a string. That's Dom Cosolino. Good, nice Canadian kid, as Don Cherry would say. Eric Haugen was born in 1961. He's new to the sport. He's the backup goalie for Norway. Uh, I'd start coughing and pretend I'd got the flu around about now. Yeah, I was born in 1960, and there's no way I'm going against these guys now. So, uh, four to nothing. I was right, it was the venue scoreboard that caught me out. Yes. Hickey. Fires it behind the goal, Riley. Lovely. Drop back from Bridges. Or well, who, should I say? Chance here, it's right across, and this is Lahu for another for him. He did yeah. it! Lahu, yeah. They're going to be happy with this kid. Lahu is, uh, is a real good up and coming star for this Canadian team from the grassroots. Gorgam takes the puck out, goes from his left hand to his right, comes out, keeps it along the ice and puts it in. A lot of good youngsters on this team, Alan. And Lahu puts another one in. He's got two so far, Lahu, with Westlake, Bridges, and Casolino. Putting the other ones on the board for a 5-0 lead. As I think the uh, the Norwegian goalie might sue for lack of support. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch with us, if you're watching this via Facebook, you can do. Just leave a message in the comment section. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, nice from Patrick Bailey. Uh, a bridge too far for Norway this game. I like yeah. it. Yes, I like it. yes. Very good. Very witty. Here's a chance. Long, whoa, Watson had a little bit of trouble with that one from outside the center. Canada with what could potentially be seen as the second time they've had to actually do some defending. Westlake steamrolling through the middle. Will he play it? Will he keep it? He keeps it for now, finds oh. a pass, and that is a beaut. There is what Canadian oh. hockey has come to. Westlake so smart. You might take the C away from him, but you can't take the heart out of him. Westlake takes the puck, he looks, he looks, unselfishly throws it over to Captain Tyler McGregor. McGregor takes his left hand and fires it under the bar. McGregor has been waiting all game for one. He's been snake bit a little, Allen, but he takes it and puts it in with a beautiful goal for a six nothing lead. From past captain, to new captain, same result. And good friends. Six nothing. There have been some great captains over the years for the Canadian team and for the Norwegian team. McGregor makes it six and uh, well, it makes the Norwegian sick I'd imagine. Chasing out to the far side is Solberg, the 31-year-old from Sabsberg in Norway. Grossfeld getting in there. Bridges looking to free the puck. And he does just that. Rob Armstrong, sorry, Tyrone Henry, number five. 
Armstrong a bit further over on this left side. In fact, just crossing in front of Hickey. And Hickey has got the freedom of the town of Ostrava, but can't find the finish. Just a little touch, might have been penalised. Yeah, Hickey had that, and it looked like he was going to throw it to the right side to Armstrong, but the Red Sea parted, and he went through. Ten of the six, Norway zero. So far, Sunday is fun day for Canada. And I did say to you that uh, Eric Haugen, who is fairly new to the sport, despite being born in 1961, the pads are going on. The pads are going on. He may not want them to go on, but they're going on. Lahou waiting in case that spills out from Tyrone Henry. It does, and Lahou's there. Not who's there, Lahou's there. There you go. Neat, real neat. I'm really impressed with Lahou's stick. This is nice from Smith as well. Can he oh. square it across? Oh, Lahou was stretching out. He's on a double. Can he get himself a hat trick? Chance for Sunt, who's also making a debut at a World Championship. I think it's his debut event for Norway in total, actually. Hickey. Doesn't pull it back first time, goes all the way around. He'll get dizzy if he keeps going. Lovely little shovel pass to the side from distance. The attempt is there. Lahou still tries to get a shot away. And then pushed away by Gronley on his short side. Driving in. They're all over them. He's Garrett Riley. And that's just pump long. Patterson takes a hit. And Sun won't get anywhere near that. They can't do anything right now. The Canadians are all over him. And a few minutes ago, we saw a little bit of a bump in the corner with Rolf Einer Pedersen and Greg Westlake. And there's the two coaches, uh, Alan on the side, Ken Babby and Mike Foligno talking. Ken Babby coached out West. Mike Foligno played in the NHL for a number of years. And his two boys are in the NHL. One of them captaining the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are in the uh, semi-finals right now. Attention in uh, in both areas then, the, not only the Stanley Cup, but here as well, of course, in the World Para Ice Hockey Championships of 2019. It's a real tussle on the blue line. Canada trying to keep it inside. They don't, but that's nice from Levin. He's got away from two. Can he find the space for a pass? The whistle goes for offside. Good good call by the linesman there. Very, very close. We've had real good, actually, referees. I know some of you that know me out there might be weird by me saying that, but real good refereeing over the uh, the first day and a half. Christian of the game. says uh, a Norway comeback. I can feel it from Oslo in Norway. Very, think, very yeah, possible. That's, that's, that's positivity to the nth degree, that. Yes. Dennis says maybe, but not against Canada. Ask Christian if he wants to buy uh, some property from me. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, a bit of a hit taken by the captain, who sensibly just moves away. And Vance is going to be penalised, it would seem. No, in fact, it's just the buzzer. So uh, maybe Vance saved by the buzzer there in the go. end. Yeah, Morton Barnes uh, played with his team for a long time, a veteran. I don't think he meant any harm there when he hit Tyler McGregor. This has been a, uh, a really, really solid period by the Canadians. And LaHue 
he might be looking, he might have watched that game and say, hey, I want, I want that game star, I want that watch or whatever they're giving away. And he's very close to getting it after one period. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Somebody uh, is uh, staking a claim to that player of the game award in the first 15 minutes of it. And uh, we'll take a look at the highlights shortly. But first, let's take a look at where the goals came from. Where didn't they come from? Smith, Westlake, Bridges, Cozzolino, LaHue and McGregor. So uh, I thought LaHue got the first one, but there you go. Smith, Westlake, Bridges, Cozzolino, LaHue and McGregor. So uh, six different scorers. I definitely written LaHue down as the first scorer, so we'll see if that's uh, yeah, I, right a little bit later on. Here is LaHue. I think they're going to change it. I thought. LaHue, I think he uh, gets a touch to that. Yeah, I think they're going to look at that again and they're going to change that. Because here it is right here. Smith takes it. He shoots it. I'm pretty sure it hit, uh, it hit him. And uh, here's another one with the Westlake outstretch, fires it in. That's for two. Westlake again, left hand to right hand today. Last night was right hand to left hand. That's pretty good hockey from Westlake. Another little action here. Billy Bridges steals the puck and he goes right hand to left hand and slips it in. Here it is again, Bridges. Under, over, and in. Beauty for Bridges. Cosolino takes it. Cosolino, left hand, right hand, outstretched goalie, and in. Again, Cosolino takes it. Just patience, patience. All of you watching out there, look at this. Look at how these Canadians take their time and make sure they're open. Lahu with another one. And I think uh, the next one, there's LaHue again, is gonna be a sweet one. One of the nicest ones you'll ever see. Westlake taking his time, seeing a breaking Tyler McGregor. McGregor takes the puck with a beautiful pickup on his left hand, takes a second and fires it under the crossbar. Well, 14 shots to two. I can tell you all two of the uh, Norwegian <laughs> shots there already banked in the memory. 14, peppering it in towards the goal of Johan Gronli. And with the uh, backup goalie being readied, number 81, Eric Haugen, you do wonder if he's going to be given his bow at the World Championships a little bit later on. 14 became six. It's just short of a 50% ratio in the first period. This one's done. Yeah, I think it is. I, I think it is. I think now you just want to, uh, you don't want to get any injuries. You just want to play smart and uh, and get through the game. Christian says, uh, channel your inner Vikings, guys. The first round is only a warm-up. And, and he actually is kind of right. But remind him that this is not the Norwegian team of 15 years ago. You might have to Google that one, maybe. Uh, that is it for now. At the end of the first period, it was Canada 6, Norway 0. There's 11 minutes left until we start again. So enjoy it. We'll be back in a minute.
So hopefully you're sticking with us for all of this one. We're just over two minutes away from rejoining the action and getting started in the second period. Just a quick catch up on the first period. And that's interesting, Paul. We went to a little break there and the first had been given to Smith. He was the guy that shot from distance, but not only did we think we saw a touch, also Lahou's reaction after the goal gave you the impression that he had got the faintest, if not the faintest, but definitely the final touch. Uh, Westlake Bridges, Cozzolino, Lahou again from Henry uh, and McGregor, really working as a team. Five different scorers over the six goals, a double for Lahou so far. It's dominant from the Canadians. Let's go over to a Norwegian perspective. What do you do to stop that? Can you? No, I, I, I unfortunately don't think you can because the Canadians uh, are young and they move the puck so well and they're on a different level right now than Norway. So Norway's best bet is to play as easy a game as possible. And they are changing goalies right now. They're going to a number 81. Who, uh, that is a very, I thought at 57 number was a weird with my number. I've never seen an 81 for a goaltender. And this is the, uh, the young man who you said is 58 years old. Give or take. Well, he's born in 61. 58 or 57. That, yeah, he could be turning so, to it. So give or take. So, okay, potatoes, <laughs> potato. <laughs> you, you stick to saving shots. I'll do maths on a calculator. Oh, no, people that know me do not want me doing math. <laughs> I don't even have grade nine math. Well, 58 or 57, either way. He's, but, either, he's either your age or he's not, one of the two. Well, he can't be. I just turned 59. 59, of course, yeah. So there. Okay, there you are. Look at that. Uh, anyway, 57, 58, 21, whatever age he is, he must be thinking, what on earth is going on? I'm coming on. At six down. There's Johan Gronli. By the way, we're not saying particularly Johan Gronli's done anything wrong here. Uh, he made some great saves yesterday against uh, Korea. Did make a couple of mistakes. Uh, however, I think there's been six goals here he couldn't have done a great deal about. No, he couldn't. And I like this by the Norwegian coach. He's your number one guy. Why leave him in for 10, 15, 20 and kill his confidence? They have to win tomorrow. They want to continue going. Down 0 2 is still not the end of the world. They don't want to go to relegation. Norway trailing by six then into the second period of this second Group A game. And already the shots come raining in. And, uh, well, Eric Haugen is in for the workout of his life. Oh, that's nearly head on. In fact, Ken Babi is asking the linesman, what are you doing? Hickey holds his head straight away. Hammer time comes at him from Hamry. And we yeah. might get another look at that. I thought that was head on. Lavin, is he uh, obstructed? He's going to... Uh, yes. Yeah, he's going to get a penalty there. And Corbin Watson was going to come out of the net, as Steve Cash did last night, to uh, to be on for the, the delayed penalty. And I think, uh, as you're right, the referee... Maybe did miss that one. It was head on head. We want to take headshots out of all hockey. This was just a hole. He pulled them down. But the Canadians are doing so many things with long transition passes. Here it is right here. Head on head for sure. That should have been five in a game. Well, missed. But noted by the cameras at least. And uh, maybe a stern word for Martin Hamry, who ironically ended up in the box anyway for a second infringement in a matter of moments. So uh, they are down a body. You just want to stay away from the head-on-head -head hits in any sport with concussion issues now. Nordstoga just jams that up the ice. But it is relentless. It was in the first period. And Gemmel can't quite get them. There might be a chance here. Solberg, no. Good comeback by Dom Cossolino. Cracking bit of defensive work from Cossolino. Gemmel skirts over one blue line. That'll be offside, will it? Yep. The Canadians, that's one of their big strengths. They have many strengths, but they really move the puck. And if they make a mistake on offense, 
defensive transition is incredible coming back on the back check to stop an offensive chance and that's the one thing Allen that I think they didn't do well last night against the Americans was he allowed Farmer and Roybal to break through the middle and their back check wasn't as good as it has to be. Pedersen with a hit on the far side, trying to dispossess Westlake. Avin, now McGregor, Hickey waiting. Hickey's now turned his back on it, but uh, lucky for him, Bridges was there. Hickey's still in space. He finds him, pulls it back oh. inside. This is a lovely move. Oh. It deserved more. It's bent the frame of the goal. That was a beautiful, beautiful passing play from Hickey to McGregor, and McGregor almost had his second. Just hit the outside of the net. Well, so far, the Norwegians have held on for nearly three minutes of this Second period, Hickey, it's got Lavin all wide open and Lavin can't get a lift. And the uh, the new goalie scrambles. He's, a, he's doing all right. Well, he's a big boy. And uh, in cases like that, when you're that big and the player has it on the outside, as we're going to see, Hickey, oh, this is the McGregor one. McGregor, oh, he just hits the post. He'll be upset with that. The there's iron. A, there's a lot of goal to go out there. And here's Lewitt. No, here's... Oh, that was an actual real nice stop there. Here's the one to Lewin, I think. Lewin has it. And the, uh, the goaltender, who's big and maybe hasn't played a lot, just gets himself down to stop the puck. There's a stick on the ice. Belongs to Smith. He's retrieved that. And the puck is sent around the boards to try and buy a little bit of time. Riley, he's allowed to come away. Oh, nearly deflected oh. into their own net there. Pedersen got right in front of his keeper. Haugen looked like he had that covered and Pedersen only made it more difficult. Chance at the other end here, not taken. Good save. Corbin Watson holds his hand high and I think uh, the Norwegian has hurt himself momentarily. I think it's pride more than anything. That was a nice play. Bounce off the boards. Gave the Norwegian a chance to jump on it. Oh, he was yeah, a little... Martin Hamry slams into the boards afterwards, doesn't he? He was a little too far over, and uh, Watson covered the, the side of the net. He had no chance. Watson holds it, and he had to show the referee, like, excuse me, Mr. Referee, I have the puck in this thing, my glove. Please blow the whistle. Is this what you're looking for? Yes. Can't play without it. And Hammer did get hammered into the boards. 11.54 on the clock. Six to nothing for Canada. And don't blink. Yes, there is a Toyota car in the far corner. There's one at the other end as well. Not sure how they park them there. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was a no parking zone. Round the outside. 23. Liam Hickey. Full of energy. Something he has in buckets this entire canadian team is they're firing on all cylinders well we said we didn't feel like they got to top gear yesterday against the usa it's just their puck movement is so good bridges got a little bit of a clothesline there back at thought about chasing it then thought better of it to stay defensively, and there's a few changes coming for the Norwegians, and they're short here. Vans, I don't think, was quick enough to get off the bench, and they've left themselves short momentarily, and it's cost them massively. That is... Oh, what a mistake. Yeah, that's, that's just bad hockey, and I think as we look down at the coach, he's not happy at all. As Barnes did not take his shift, he didn't go, he was waiting, maybe he was sleeping, which gave the uh, Canadians an opportunity to have a five on four. I'll let you finish talking about the actual finish itself. Yeah, you know, and, and, and then he, he came down Hickey. Hickey comes down and fires it and beats the goaltender. Not, not really any chance there. Takes the puck, left hand. Left hand shooting is great for these Canadians and beats them for the goal. I will tell you something that happened off camera. Uh, Martin Varnes went over to the bench and actually 
fair play. Esplin Hedge, the coach, apologised to him. I think the coach made a fault there. There you go, then that I really like. Lavin, another chance straight away. Oh, well done. Haugen doesn't hold it, but it's away nonetheless. We have a penalty. I think it's going to Pedersen. Well, penalty called. It's seven to nothing, and we'll take a short break. Uh, very experienced Rolf Heiner Pedersen, nine time Paralympian. Uh, Paul, what you spotted on the Canadian bench? Yeah, so you have a 7 0 lead, and you'd figure that Canada would be happy, but they're in that bit of a TV timeout. The Canadians, coach Ken Babby and Mike Foligno, they have their power play unit in a huddle. They're talking to him about scoring the eighth, not just scoring the eighth, but about getting it done the right way, the Canadian way. Love it. This right side, McGregor, bit of space here, decides not to go for it himself, there is a bit of room on the left, and Hickey doesn't disappoint. And that's exactly, right now Coach Babby should, he's laughing, I'm looking down, him and Mike Foligno are laughing because they planned it, they drew it up, and it happened, and that is when you are so excited. Look at the Canadians coming off, McGregor gets it, he throws it, slip off pass to the right hand of Hickey, and Hickey puts it in the net. They don't even look like it's anything other than a goal. No celebration. The Canadian coaches, Mike Foligno, who we talked about a bunch of times, giving the high five to all the Canadians coming off because nothing better for a coach than drawing a plan up and having it come to. There's uh, 30, uh, 25 and a half minutes left of this game, and we're already equal to the biggest scoreline we've had so far. Ain't nothing from the Czech team against a very out of sorts Japan yesterday on well, Norway. I would be extremely surprised if they don't take that, uh, well, I was gonna say honor, but it's not, is it? If they don't take that title away, I would be massively surprised if Canada don't get one more in the next probably 30 seconds, perhaps. Smith tries to find one in and uh, Haugen had set himself nicely, but he never got there. Big hit, big hit on the far side from Lahu, who's also on a hat-trick now with Hickey. I'm very impressed with Lahu. He, uh, he's really, really come on strong. 25-year-old yeah, from Thetford Mines in Quebec. Wow. I don't know how that was there. The Norwegian beat the Canadian down. But you know, the one thing we haven't said, uh, unfortunately for the Norwegians, Alan, is they still have to play the Americans. Well, let's let's leave comment for that for that game, shall we? Yes. 9:43 on the clock. Keep those comments coming in. Uh, Layla is watching from Melbourne, Australia. Come on, Norway, she says. That needs a lot more cheering than that to help them out. Hickey, angled ball, puck to uh, to the far side. Doesn't quite make the intended target. Henry. Feeds it off, around the back they'll go. And uh, Cook is also watching from Brisbane, Australia. And is the uh, the para ice goalie. So, uh, there you go, the para ice hockey goalie. I had, an, I had an opportunity, sorry, to work with him last July in, uh, in Australia, very nice guy. Hickey. Feeds it through beautifully, and that's just, just past the post. The Norwegians have lost it all together here. Hamley, 30-year-old couldn't get there. Bridges! Ooh. 
That oh. was a Billy Bridges special. And he just goes right off. No need to celebrate whatsoever. I have been the recipient of that Billy Bridges shot under the bar many times. Bridges with an absolute cannon. I don't care if you're Patrick Waugh, Freddie Anderson, any of the greatest goalies in NHL history. That one's going in. What? There you go. And that, I'm telling you, Alan, that's coming hard too. There's Billy Bridges. Just about lifted the goal off its haunches. Born in PEI, resides now in Mississauga. A phenomenal, phenomenal young man. I've known him since he's 14 years old. Now 35, debuted back in 1998, so an 11-year career. This is Billy's 21st year with 21st the Canadians. Uh, career, sorry, yes. The Canadians. Do you know what, your maths are getting so much better and mine are just getting worse standing next to you. No, I just know, I've memorized he's, it's his 21st year. I didn't add that up. We might need a, an abacus if this carries on. Oh, no, that's beautiful, well done, Haugen. Nice stop by the Norwegian goalie as they're looking for anything. The Norwegian bench is going nuts and the crowd going crazy. Big stop. Well, he's seeing everything with his glasses. By the rookie goalie, but wily veteran human being. Throws it over to McGregor. Nice stop. I'm sure deep down he's enjoying it. Yeah, it has to be. You're putting your, your country's jersey on. 41% efficiency with their shooting so far. Yeah, I think any team would take that. At 9 nothing up, there's no complaints, is there? Well, side, Solberg, 31-year-old, out-muscling his opponent, and it allows Norwegians to come away down the right side. Trapped against the board is Bakker. Henry's in tight on him, he's not going to allow that to happen. Good hit by Norstaga. The Norwegians fire it out. This should not be icing. Here's an opportunity. Oh, it's beautifully fed in. Can they get one? Yes, they can. That might be their gold medal right there. Look at the face of this young kid. The puck snuck through. Corbin Watson will probably want that back as he's only had three shots on goal. I think he was looking for a shutout to uh, to have the goaltenders in Canada get their first shutout, but it's not meant to be. Little swing off play, gets it all alone. That was Henry's man, he let him slip away. Solberg takes it, throws it over. There was gonna be a penalty too for holding. Here he comes. Watson gives him way too much of the net. He had to stay square in the middle, and that puck would have hit him in the shoulder. But by giving him that much and tipping over, they negate the penalty and the power play chance. But they put it in for their first one at 9-1. They gotta be happy about that. Well, Ola Orseth, just 20 years of age from Trondheim. Made a debut back in 2015, and he's got himself a goal against Canada, 9-1. to one. And I guarantee he'll be happy about that. Our friend Christian says uh, the comeback is on, perhaps. Perhaps. We'll just leave that there, shall we? Yep. Chase begins for Unakri. Icing's been called off. Gemmel gets there first. And away comes Armstrong with the puck. Again, neat. Bridges waits. Armstrong. Oh, oh, easy. It's too easy for Crane. Oh, my God. That was just 
beautiful. That's what you call tic-tac-toe, a precise, gorgeous goal. Here it is here, Bridges slips it off, back to Crane, wide open net. No chance for the goaltender. There it is, Bridges to Armstrong, Armstrong to Crane, Crane to the back of the net. Norwegian goalie puts his hands up and says, what do I gotta do? Well, you gotta do nothing because there's nothing you can do. 6.13 left in this second period. Canada 10, Norway 1. Rodney Crane adding his name to the scorer's list. He's gotta be happy about that. Three players on a double. McGregor now, oh, oh. beautifully lifted. Oh. Beautifully lifted in, and it's number 11. And that's uh, uh, the gentleman that's saying goal is a little tired. He needs a, a throat mint. Beautiful play by Hickey. Hickey's turned into a great player, assistant captain. Over to the captain, McGregor. McGregor gets his hat trick, puts it under the bar, even hits the water bottle and knocks it up in the air. McGregor, left to right, or the towel, whatever, on the top of the net. There you go, right to left, just a beauty. The goaltender lays down, he wants to leave. He wants to go back to Norway, he's had enough. And I don't blame him. I think very soon though, Alan, you're gonna see Coach Ken Babby ask his boys to uh, to shut the goals down, maybe just move the puck around. You don't want to embarrass anybody. 11 to one. As it stands with just under six minutes remaining. When, when is it the right time to stop? And then we still have another 15 minutes to play in the third. In right. Stroder goes in hunt of the puck. Showing good strength, but she's eventually beaten to it and beaten to the punch, Smith. Great pad laid movement. off, yeah, neat indeed. Hickey once again causing trouble. Riley makes the space on, oh, that just spins up in the wow. air. Now off the outside of Halgen, he won't know much about this, but he's somehow keeping the puck out. He has no clue where the puck is. And eventually, it comes to a halt right in front of the house. Schroeder. Well, who went right hand, left hand three times there? Oh, Smith just casually steals the puck from everyone and sees his shot come off the bottom of the sled. Mutzdogger getting stuck in. Oh, it's behind Smith. He couldn't quite angle his body enough to get a purchase on it to take it goalwards. Riley round the outside, hit, and hit well from Nordstoger, 36 year old. Not afraid to put it in where it hurts. Oh, Schroeder was just led a merry dance, and oh. it's in. And that's, uh, I don't know, I, I want to be, I want to be nice here. But Bridges sort of just threw that on net. It hit the Norwegian in the front of the sled, went over his head. That's an extremely weak goal. And that's the hat trick for Bridges, of course. Yeah, there's Bridges' hat trick. And right in the top corner. And uh, Bridges had a, a sad week, Alan. His mother, Mary, passed away last week. Billy's a great guy and has a great family. And I know he's playing these games in his mom's memory to all the bridges back home in PEI and in uh, in Ontario. All the best. And uh, Mary was a real nice person. Cheered for me and the team for many, many years and been a big part of Billy's uh, progress over the years. And I'm sure he uh, he's playing with a heavy heart, Alan. Uh, a great deal of pride, I'm sure, as well. Big collision of shoulders on the blue line. And again, Canada working so hard to keep possession. Armstrong trying to go around the outside, and he does. That's some brilliant speed. 
just turfed away by Martin Hamri. Over the blue line on the far side, they come again. Gemmel. Now uh, Solberg has it wrestled away. They're just waiting for this 322 to expire. Cosolino in the neutral zone, just neatly spinning away from the opposition and two Canadians working very hard to stay on side. Rosalino gives Slavin something to chase and he gets there, he creates a bit of space and then hits the side of the net. Not the inside of the net, not yet. Swings around Rolf Pedersen and Rolf but just throws it around in done desperation. well to get that away, hasn't he? Hickey feeds it into the path of McGregor. Oh. Westlake on Pedersen. That's old school Westlake on Pedersen. Oh, that one's deflected wide. Nobody knowing a great deal about that one. Grossfeld on the near side. Collected it once, then tried to give it away to Westlake. Hickey once more. Going to struggle to find a player of the game in this one. Armstrong, good save again. Haugen, not that time. Squeezed in. On the short side. And that's number four for McGregor. I don't think McGregor even was trying there. He slipped it in, had the empty net, and he had to put it in. Lewin with a real nice play. Chest saved by the goal, another save, and then the third one from McGregor goes in. I was talking on that hit. Westlake came in hard on Rolf Reiner Pedersen. Anybody watch the gold medal game in 2006 in Torino? know that a young Rolf Pedersen and even younger Greg Westlake had a couple of real physical battles in Torino, Italy in 2006. And they're reunited again here in 2019 in Osaraba. 206 still left here in this second period then. 13-1. Don't adjust your sets. Canada 13, Norway 1. And yes, there is one on Norway's board for those of you that thought Canada might shut them out. Flick forward. More in hope than anything. Crane around the back of the net. Finding Corbin Smith, 20-year-old from Ontario. The average age of the Canadian team, just 26. Compare that to Japan's over 40 squad. Well, the Canadians' the average age went down 30 years when I retired. <laughs> Smith chasing again. Trying to hustle and harass the Norwegian defenseman. Okay, that's nice. Is this the chance to create a second? No, it's not. Wrapped up and put him under the Christmas tree. The battle goes on here. But Norway yeah. just dump it. Crane takes it from the goalie. 34 seconds to go here. And Scoreline 13 to 1. And we'll get a short break here.
as the uh, Canadian team makes its way back on for the final 30 seconds of this second period. They'll have to do it a man light. Garrett Riley serving a two minute. So we won't see Riley until at least the third period. Now Backer got a couple of long ranges yesterday. This one's flung in from deep from Varnas. Kept inside the blue line just by Backer and then just hoisted away. And Halgen gets his stick to it and waits for the cavalry to arrive. A few seconds remaining in this one before the buzzer then. Paul Rosen as the second period comes to a halt. This will be much more of what Coach Barbie wants for that Canadian team. Just go out there and as you mentioned a little bit during the, uh, the Czech Republic game yesterday, go out there and do some drills. Go out there and practice what you've been practicing. Maybe some of the things that you don't normally use in a game. Go out there and try them again. Yeah, that's, I think that's what's uh, going to be done in the third period. You don't need any more goals. You're up 13-1. Everybody knows you're the better team. Now work on things that are going to help you in the hopeful gold medal game against the States because that's the team that you're having trouble beating and you don't want to come here for another silver. You want to defend that goal from 2017, move the puck around. They're doing some great things, but I'd be surprised if they put any more in the net. It's been a classy game so far. Let's hope the last 15 are classy, Alan. Stay classy, folks. We'll stay with you. Hickey, Hickey, Bridges. And then all of a sudden, Oiseth got one for Norway. Armstrong delivered for Crane. Hickey then turned provider after his early two goals in that period for McGregor. Bridges and then McGregor again. So Bridges and McGregor both have hat-tricks here in this game at the end of the second period. It's Canada 13, Norway 1. As we take a look back at the highlights. And there's uh, one of the many. Bridges sends it over to Hickey. Left hand down. Really nice passing. There's another one for Hickey. Over to Hickey, right hand in. Seems we've said Hickey's name a lot today. Costolino to Bridges, under the bar, an absolute rifle of a shot. Bridges said to you, Alan, yesterday he was gonna use that rifle and he did it today. Hickey steals, loses it, and this is the Norwegian opportunity for the youngster. He'll remember that goal for a long time. Little slip off. The young Norwegian puts it past Corbin Watson. And look at his face, he was excited. This was a beautiful goal. Bridges to Armstrong to Crane. That's how you move the puck. Bridges, little slip off to the left. Over to Armstrong, over to Crane. Another one in, a lot of frustration there. And here's another one from Armstrong. Liam Hickey over to McGregor. McGregor puts another one in. This is another one that went in. That was kind of an own goal. Bridges takes it, and he puts it in off of the front of the sled of the goaltender. You got to feel sorry for him. Here's Lewin with a shot. McGregor for his, like, 19th goal, Noah's fourth. He puts the rebound in. His third, I thought he scored four. Well, he'll probably do that in the third. McGregor puts it in. Canada 13, Norway 1, 15 shots on goal. Again, just under 50% accuracy in the second period then. Seven of those 15 strikes nestling behind Eric Haugen, who made his debut here in this second period. Not one to be remembered straight off the bat, I'm sure he will. Uh, just the two shots on goal for Norway. They uh, held a 50% ratio because of that. And uh, four minutes inside the penalty box for the Norwegians as well. They've not been afraid to mix it up with the challenging. But it's 13-1, which is proving a little challenging for Norway. We'll be back in just a few minutes' time.
So thanks for rejoining us. The third period of the World Power Ice Hockey Championships 2019 coming up. And uh, there are the goals. Only from the second period, you can't fit them all on one from the entire game so far. The uh, single digit that uh, sits in the Norway column, uh, an assist for Solberg, who actually did very well. He was spiralling out of control and somehow managed to direct the puck into the pass of young Iseth, and Iseth uh, didn't mess about. So uh, there's Corbin Watson. He'll be disappointed to have conceded here against Norway, won't he? Oh, he'll definitely be three, four shots. These are the games you want shutouts for sure as a goalie. You, you won't tell anybody but about that. But when you're playing, you know, Norway, Sweden, different, Estonia, different teams, you uh, Japan, you want a shutout in that game because you know it's going to be very tough against the Americans. He, I think if he watches that replay again, Alan, he'll see that he, he just leaked out a little. He went a little too far to the one side, the short side post. You know, three saves, one goal. He's a really good goalie, and he'll uh, he'll want that back. He'll work harder in practice so that doesn't happen again. As you see him with Greg Westlake uh, talking to each other. I think we got a little uh, little excess water on the ice that we had last night. And that's well, that, a that's a goaltender's nightmare. Excess water on the ice. Well, that gives us uh, an opportunity. There's some of the uh, Canadian families. Go on, Paul. Name and shame. Yes, that's uh, the uh, Smith family and the Dunn family. Uh, they're coming over from Ontario, long way, but they uh, they love their Canadian hockey. What's he thinking, Coach Bobby? What's he Ken, thinking now? Ken Bobby's very happy. He's got to be everything he's asked the team to do. He's done every bit of uh, execution they've done, and the one thing they haven't done, which he's going to be very happy, is they haven't been unclassy. They've scored their goals and they've skated away. No need to celebrate now. Garrett Riley in the penalty box. It gives us an opportunity to say that uh, it's Roderick Crane, not Rodney. Roderick Crane. There you go. Yeah, we are your correct name. We were we were led down the uh, the primrose path uh, with some duff information, but there you go. Uh, Roderick Crane. So uh, apologies for calling him Rodney. I like both names, to be fair. Uh, Roderick Crane, we will get that right for the rest of this tournament. Don't you worry about that. North Stugger comes away for Norway. The first 30 seconds just about to rack itself up and it's gone without, well, anything, any incident whatsoever. The Norwegians have just fetched it from one end and uh, carried it all the way up to the other. Well, that's as far as they've got there. The one thing I guarantee you is his teammates won't be calling him Rodney or Roderick. They'll be calling him something different. Probably Rod. Um, oh, we'll go with that then. That's nice from the Norwegians in the early start of this. Oh, oh it's creeped in. Oh, my oh God. a lackluster start from the Canadians has cost them a goal. Wow. Corbin Watson will not be happy about that. That was an easy shot from the slot. You know, we don't like uh, then the goaltenders union ripping our goalies, but that just can't go in. The shot comes off, it's in the middle. It's a simple shot, it's deflected a little, but it goes off of Watson's glove. It looked like it was in his glove for a second. I want to see that again. That actually went off the back of, let me see that again here. That, oh, that was a little bit of a deflection. From our vantage point, way up here in the newsbleed section, the nosebleed section, pardon me, it was deflected, leaked through Watson's arm by his glove. He'd still like to have that, but uh, deflections are hard to stop, uh, Alan. Well, it's Backer's third goal of the tournament, we and they're all from far out. And we talked about Backer a few times. Allow him time to load and you get the back of bullet and that's exactly what we've had here on day two and day one as this one feeds itself through to Cozzolino against the backboards just trying to outwit Pedersen you need some skill to outwit Pedersen but that's something that uh, Cozzolino has and Pedersen though working tirelessly to stop the movement oh it's just in front just in front 
of the outstretched arm of Gemmel. Good play by Bridges, though. Crane and Gemmel, they were all over. Costolino's got the puck. He loses it in the corner. Norway fires it around. Smith coming in hard. Off the check. Puck's caught in the corner down low. Coming out is Costolino. Costolino has it. Back to the point. Blocked by the Norwegian at the point and sent down to Costolino. Costolino just keeping hold. Fired out to Smith on this near side, but his own control lets him down and they can't bundle it any further than the blue line. The Norwegians and the whistle goes. The linesman is calling too many men on the ice. The uh, Canadian went to make a change. The puck squirted through, touched one of the Canadians. And the linesman who can call, for those of you out there, the linesman can call too many men on the ice penalties. The linesman called it, told the referee, Canadians had too many on. And now Coach Babby has to send somebody to the box. And he sent Dominic Cosolino. And they're shorthanded now, and Watson's going to uh, have to come up big now because the Norwegians are coming on strong, Allen. Can they impact on the score line more than they already have here? Vance goes round twice, blocked by the opposite number nine, Smith, and this one's worked its way out to the left side. This is neat from Norway, that's not so neat. Worth a go. Riley getting himself upright. Smith working to block off the efforts of uh, Arden Bakker. He's been the standout player for Norway, you would say, in the opening couple of days. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. The torch has been passed from Pedersen to Bakker. Hickey's, who had, he's had a great game, comes out, transition, and fires it down to kill some time. Still the 50 seconds left on that penalty for Dom Cozzolino. Big hit oh. in center ice, but Norway able to continue. Yeah, that should not be a penalty. He's gonna call, he's gonna call a hit on Gemmel. He's gonna call a rough. Pedersen around the outside, that's nice. Experience number three, needs an option. He decides to try and fire it in himself. They've pulled the goalie. He got those. Nordstager up towards the defensive blue line. They come in Norway again, right through the center. Hamri gets caught up a little bit. Westlake has the chance to get this away and eventually the whistle goes. Now, the ref called the penalty there. I think he called a rough on Gemmel. That was a beautiful hit, in my opinion. There you go. He caught him. I thought he caught him with a good hit. I could be wrong. What the Norwegians did wrong there, Alan, as I think the Norwegians are calling a timeout. But what they did wrong was they didn't throw the puck in immediately. It was a delayed penalty. They throw the puck, let the Canadians touch it then they're going to have a five on three for probably a minute and change, but they took the puck back and played and played and played, lost a bunch of time. Now they're gonna only have a five and three for four seconds. You gotta be thinking there, as soon as the ref's hand went up in the neutral zone, somebody's gotta be saying, throw it in, get a touch, we've got a, a lot more time. This is where something like game management becomes crucial for the bigger teams, doesn't it? Absolutely, if that happened to Canada, the States, they would know immediately. Fire that puck in, get one of the players to touch it for a stoppage in play, and you're gonna have 20, 30 more seconds with, uh, with a five on three. 
And I don't care how good you are, five on three in sled is very difficult to defend. And these but, are things like, you know, Espen Hedge, compared to some of the other coaches, he's, he's, he's very young. Uh, and, and actually, this is the kind of second mistake that we've made as a team here in Norway. So it's something for them to learn. We had the earlier incident where they didn't have enough players on the ice, and they, he held his own hand up for that one. Should he have been shouting, just get rid? Immediately. Immediately. Dump it in. Dump it in. You wanted as much time with a five on three as possible. They gave up at least 30 seconds by playing around with it. Oh, shot early. And the Canadians out now. And uh, whilst Gemmel starts his two minute penalty, they already have one back. So five on four, as Paul was saying. Could have had a few moments with just three Canadians on the ice, but uh, not to be. Cozzolino is now out. As Baca looking to make a nuisance of himself once again. That's only pushed into the path of Bridges, trying to go around the outside of his opposition. The Norwegians have come out very strong in this period, Al. Alan, the, uh, they've really been bottling the Canadians up. A yeah, big burst of energy in this third period from a them. Absolutely, right after that goal. Well, Oisith is one of the goal scorers. He's loitering with intent on the blue line at the moment. That's back here, the other one. And uh, Tyrone Henry and Hickey chasing that back. 36 seconds of the penalty remain. He's had such a good game, Hickey. Yes, he has. Found the intended target with that pass once again. Very rarely has he let his side oh. down, and that's huge from McGregor. The fall to Westlake. Westlake is going to kill the rest of this penalty. Very smart penalty killing over to McGregor. Oh, McGregor almost got hit in the trolley tracks. McGregor keeps hold. And you, exactly right. That one second has passed. And they have a full strength unit once again. You question whether they even need it. Icing call. 8.15 on the clock. Canada 13, Norway 2. Well, what's he thinking down here, at Paul? Espen Hedge. Well, you know what? He's got to be a little happy now. There's been a couple of mistakes, but he's going to learn from things, and I think he's going to be happy with the fact that the team has played quite good the last five, six minutes, and they haven't allowed a goal in a while, and they've scored another one. So you got to take little things from this. Nina Stoda putting her effort in at the face-off. I think the venue DJ has realized that we've started again. Here he has. Behind their own goal, they go with Westlake. Roderick Crane asking for it. Westlake bypassing the first option. Spinning away from Sunt. And finding Riley on this near side. And another arm is raised by the official. So 13-2 as we take a short break. James Gemmel has a two-minute penalty for Canada. 
with just 7.45 on the clock. The Norwegians will be hoping to add at least another score to their tally here, won't they? Well, I tell you one thing, Coach Babby won't be happy. This is three penalties in a row, six, uh, six minutes of killing in the last seven minutes, and that's just too much. Little indiscipline then, maybe, from the new crop coming in to assist the old card. Pedersen just shoving his opponent out of the way. He's a big boy, and Rob Armstrong is not that big. Shoulder to shoulder. Tyrone Henry gives no inch. Pedersen gives no yard. And that's neat. But uh, Backett is uh, fighting a, a one-man battle at times. Pedersen, oh, takes a face full of plastic on this near side. And Bridges says hello to him, too. That's an old, they're talking again, Bridges and Pedersen, and that brings back a lot of memories for me, Alan. Billy Bridges and Rolf Weiner Pedersen. Backett being chased down by Wesley. He's uh, neatly side-maneuvered him. Franz, that's lovely. Uses the aerial route, and uh, it's got Oisith in a bit of space. Oisith, he can leave it, has got Backer coming through. Backer needs some support, and it's well, well defended, and then just hooked away. Anything will do from Hickey there, and this isn't what Bobby would have wanted, is it? To see his team being stretched. However, it's good practice. It actually is very good practice, but it's not the way he wanted them to come out in the third, I'll guarantee you that. Hamlet on this near side, tumbles, but it allows Pedersen to take over. He needs some support. They're too far away from him here. Oiseth, it's a long way out, oh, shoots it straight into the chest of the captain. Got McGregor right in the sternum, and that hurts. We might have a look at the old bruising. I think he was close enough for it not to be full power. Oh, that was trying to be clever from Pedersen. And Smith trying to go around the outside. Oh, it's done well here defensively. Backer is there as well, and he squashes the opposite, number 22, Garrett Riley, against the boards. 5-16 remaining. Another big hit on this near side. This time, it's from Lloyd Solberg. A lot more hitting in the third period than we had in the first two. As the Norwegians are really playing well the last eight, nine minutes. Oh, some afters from Garrett Riley on Pedersen. That's for everybody that has a chance to hit uh, Rolf Weiner. They're hitting him as soon as they get a chance. Hickey feeds it off to Riley, and Riley's in a bit of danger here because uh, Solberg's across there. There goes Pedersen, that wasn't soft. And uh, <laughs> Pedersen, his arms around the head here. I'm not sure if any of the officials have seen that. We can see it clearly on our camera. And well, Ralph Einer Pedersen has been doing that for what? About 120 years? He's been doing it for a long time. He did it to me a couple of times <laughs> in my crease. <laughs> you deserve it. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably, yeah. Yeah, you see the referee talking to, uh, to one of the Norwegians right now about it. 13 to 2. We we'll take a short break. Couple of seconds before we start again, and 4:20 on the clock. 13-2. Little confusion over a break there. This is not of yours tuning in. This is not a football 
or a baseball score, it's a hockey score. Bridges, oh! oh! Slams it against the upright. And the net is still moving in the wind. Halgen might have to text a friend and see what happened there, because it was too quick to see. Wow, Bridges had the wide open yawning cage, and was that gonna be for his hat trick? Yep. He hit the no, post. No, he's already got his. Oh, that would have been for his fourth. Yep, Cozzolino. Wow. Turns hit. away from uh, Torstian from Nekke. Armstrong on the far side. Oh, Cozzolino couldn't steal it. The Norwegians have a chance to come over to this near side. Oysith wasn't the intended target, actually. And the whistle goes once again. He called a high stick there. Once one of the players touches a puck with a high stick, if his own team touches it, it's a whistle blowing down. Here it is coming cross net. Bridges has it wide open net, and he hits the post with the yawning cage. Billy rarely, rarely, rarely ever does that. And you got the young young lady coming out. Is she? I have I noticed her tonight. Is oh yeah, she's been on several times. Okay. Chance for Backer. He's gone from long oh. again. Oh my word! Watson nearly caught out for a second time. He wouldn't have liked that. No, he wouldn't. Watson is normally very, very, very uh, solid. Backer trying to come inside from the boards. Now they've got to keep it away from McGregor. They've done well here. Here is uh, Lena Schroeder giving possession away, though. McGregor tries to get that one past Pedersen, who's back on the ice. Sunt takes a bit of a nudge. Backer tries to oh, find uh, that's Emil Kestistian on the far side. There is an arm raised by the official, so the next time this one goes dead, we'll get the call. Captain leading by example, though. They're going to try and score from this. Great oh, pass. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And like we said a few seconds ago, when the Norwegians maybe should have dumped it in for the Canadians to touch, this one here wasn't not for a five on three. This one here, you want to set it up, get your six attacker on. McGregor moved and moved and moved and moved the puck till he saw Lewin wide open, down low. Lewin picks it up. He's played really well. He was given most of the net and he puts it in. That was going to be a T-bone penalty. Zach Lavin gets the, uh, gets the goal. And it's 14 to two. We're just waiting for the officials to uh, decide what they're doing with the incident before that. And they're not. Face off. It is 2-22, 14-2. We're in the final period. It's just dumped out to this near side. A good chasing down and a chance. And well held by Corbin Watson. There was a, a busy area of ice in front of him and he's dealt with everything that was there. 2.05 remaining. A yeah, great little play on the force there by the Norwegian, slipped it out. Got the opportunity for a, a shot from the corner. Nice stop though by Watson. Just saw a, uh, a shot of some people in the crowd a moment ago, and there's a young lady in a Sweden flag and a young lady in a Czech Republic flag. They've got hours to wait for that one. That's not until 8 o'clock local time. It's uh, only 10 to 3. They probably came in for four incredible games of para ice hockey. Can't fault them. They've seen a lot of goals so far today. They <laughs> have seen a lot of goals. That isn't not true. 5-1 in the first. We're 14-2 here. I don't quite think that's all there is as well. Still over a minute left. Both of these sides will look to try and put one more. Chalk another one onto the board. As they say, Smith can't find enough space. 
to do that. That's a neat turn. And another in and tries to give it away. Nordstoga. Hamri on the far side. Nordstoga has come in and stolen it. And it could be a chance of three on two. And no, they don't. They go for a two on one on the far side from deep again. Crowd is cheering quite loud here. Baka comes on and luckily he was in the right position at the right time to beat Cozzolino and Baka just slings one forward as well. 29 seconds to go. Rivera, not seen too much of him in this game. Oh, Bridges and Pedersen. Something may happen here. Oh, Pedersen comes in with a flying elbow. Bridges is not happy. He's talking to Pedersen right now. This is old school Canada and Norway. Bridges is not happy I have at seen, all. I have seen Alan a lot of this going back a long time from Torino in 2006, Vancouver in 10. Pedersen loves doing that. He, he flies across the zone. He's smiling as he leaves, isn't he, Pedersen? And he throws a flying elbow. He doesn't get Bridges as good as he can. But Rolf Weiner loves to use that elbow. Here's Bridges turning. Pedersen up with that elbow right in the jaw. Yeah, the officials. And we want that out of the game. That. I'm proud of Billy Bridges, though, for not losing it. Old Billy would have thrown a punch there for him to actually just bow away, knowing they're up 14 2, and let Rolf Weiner go to the box. That's quite a, 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 an act of maturity there. Final few seconds then, and. Uh, Whilst it doesn't exactly end on the sourest of moments, it actually ends on a shot from Lahu, which is how we started the day. Lahu got the first one, and he was desperate to try and add one more to his tally a little later on. Well, pats on the back all around for the Canadian team. Norway have bagged a couple. So it finishes Canada 14. Norway to the players start to remove their helmets. The uh, the faces of well, not exactly joy from the Canadians because there's still plenty to do in this tournament. But this one is just a job done and job done well. There were yeah, moments though. There were, there were, and I I think you're going to give the the Norwegian the best player was Baka. Whether they give it to Baka or not, I don't know. But who gets it for Canada? There's three hat tricks. Lots of goals. Well, I tell you what, Watson's not going to get it uh, like LaRock got it. No. I thought McGregor played well today. Certainly led by example. A couple of really neat finishes. So it could be somebody like that. Lahu was great. Lahu was, yeah. He's a young kid. Take well, a look at the uh, the goals page here. Then Hickey and Hickey to start with. Bridges, Crane, McGregor, Bridges, McGregor. It just goes on and on. Oyster Thumbaka, as we said, getting... The, uh, the notches for Canada. Canada. I'm going to say Hickey. Pick I one. Say, I say Lahu. Okay. Whoa, I got it. I want one. He gets a firm handshake as a prize. Well, yep, Liam Hickey. I got my first one. A driving force for Canada today. Newfoundland and Labrador's pride of joy, Liam Hickey. His parents will be very happy. And all of Newfoundland and Labrador are probably, they're up really early, I'm telling you. But they're happy. Former wheelchair basketball player at the Rio Paralympics as well. He's a real good athlete all around. He had a good game. He took a couple of penalties, but he had a good game. Young up and coming Norwegian. Yeah, Hamre, who, uh, to be fair to him, has put in a, some, uh, some ground covered, shall we say. And that's why he looks a little bit more out of breath, maybe, than uh, Hickey on the other side. He uh, certainly contested. For possession on numerous occasions, Hamlet. There's uh, Lena Schroeder, only female to be taking part 
in this multi-sex tournament as we have the national anthem of Canada. Somebody was singing that quite loudly up in the commentary box. I'll give you a guess, it wasn't me. I'm a proud Canadian, what can I say? I've got a couple of those up here. The broadcast manager for the IPC singing along with that as well. Almost, hey. almost deafening. You would, have, you would have sang the, uh, the UK anthem, would you not have? Well, we're not here. There is a GB game today, actually. Some of the uh, people on Facebook telling us they're off to watch uh, Great Britain play later on. Thank you very much to Dean for that piece of information. Uh, our attentions are all here inside the Czech Republic and, more importantly, inside the Ostrava Arena, where today Canada have run out 14-2 victors over Norway. It's two defeats in two days for Norway. We're 1-1 one and one for Canada. How will they fare in their final game, which should be an easy one for them? You never know, though. Korea do surprise us from time to time. The World and Paralympic bronze medalists await. And after being beaten 14-2 by the reigning world champions, a nice easy game in a couple of days' time for Norway against the reigning Paralympic champions. There isn't really a day off for anybody, is there? No, not really. And you have... Uh... You have Korea coming up the next game very soon, playing the Americans, and with the Canadians scoring 14, the Americans love trying to top them. They might be looking for 15. Well, there you see the Norwegians uh, sat on the ice because they're going to applaud the section of fans. There was a lot of Norwegian flags up in the stand today. And uh, the Canadians are doing that as well. There was a, a smattering of... Canadian flags up in the stands too. So, uh, rightly, they are being honoured for their support during the game. We had the Italians out here in force this morning as well. But uh, I think from now, the building will start to fill up. Sweden and the Czech Republic this evening promises to be a full house. USA versus Korea is the appetizer for the main course as far as the locals are concerned. Paul, take a look back at some of the action. Bridges with one of his many goals there. Consolino takes it, left hand, right hand, like a lot of players can do now. This was a beauty. Henry Farside, LaHue puts it in. Westlake with a beautiful pass to McGregor. McGregor left hand and puts it in. Bridges again with a little slip up back pass to Hickey. Hickey gets another one. Another play over to Hickey. Hickey with another one. Hickey, your game start today was all over the ice. Another slip off play to Billy Bridges with an absolute cannon in the top corner. This is the Norwegian's first goal. Gets it in, slips it in. Watson will want that again. He gave up far too much of the long side. Tried to cheat a little. And here's a beautiful goal for the Canadians. Hickey again throws it over. We've said his name a lot. We've said McGregor's name a lot. He puts it in left hand, right hand. Bridges now cuts across. 
and puts one in off of the Norwegian sled. Both Norwegian goaltenders will be going for a massage tonight. I will guarantee you that. Another beautiful play. McGregor gets his rebound and slips it in for one of his three. Norwegians here with a nice one. Backa just throws it on net and it squeaks through. Chicken wings through the arm of Corbin Watson. And then another one for Canada. So that's how it looks at the moment in Group A. Canada jumped to the top, but only on their goal difference as it stands because USA and Korea are yet to play. A victory for either of those, and they'll jump straight back above Canada for Norway. Up fourth position is what it's going to be in their group, which will mean that they will play the victor in Group B. And if it's somebody like the Czech Republic, as we know we were impressed by them on the opening day, if it's somebody like the Czech Republic, Norway could be in trouble from a team from Group B because they've got to go better than that. However, they are still scoring. Two yesterday, two today. There's fight there. There is fight there, and you, you have to take a little promise away because what they did in the, uh, in the third period was pretty exciting. But the Czech Republic really have surprised me. It's one game. They're going to uh, shock the arena and pack it tonight. I think they're coming out flying against Sweden tonight. And then they could win again in their last game, which will be their toughest game against Italy. They, they have really impressed me so far, the, the host Czech Republic team. There you go. So join us a little bit later on. It's a, a 4.30 local time for the face-off. If you want to get the puck drop live, you'll be here with us. If not, you can catch all the action on the IPC YouTube page. Paralympic.org for the website, for all the information you could possibly want. But for now, from myself and Paul Rosen, goodbye.